I didn't expect that Thomas Edison will be mentioned in my episodes again, but what do you know, here it is again. So it's December in Mount Vernon, and it means at least two things. First of all, it's super cold, right? And the second thing is it's lights all over the place and people seem to be enjoying the holidays. If you're like me, you probably wonder, why do they make Christmas trees and why do they decorate them? So it turns out that people used uh, trees to celebrate various pagan holidays in the past. And, uh, but the first time when, when somebody used a tree the way we do nowadays, in, in, like bring it in the house, may have been uh, German preacher Martin Luther. The thing is, he was walking one of uh, one day. He was walking through the forest, and he looked up at the star, uh, at the at the sky, and saw the stars through the trees. And so, the story goes that he decided to bring the tree into the house and uh, and and tell his children that uh, when he was walking, that he reminded them of Jesus, how he left the stars and came to Earth on Christmas Day. Now, at first, people decorated trees with like edible items. It was like uh, gingerbread and, and, and gold-covered apples. Later they started to use like glass ornaments and eventually they got to a point where they would put candles on the trees. They would literally put candlesticks on a highly flammable pine tree. As you can imagine it didn't really take long for the first fire to start. Surprisingly though it didn't stop people from doing it. Now it turns out Thomas Edison and his uh, buddy and business partner Edward Johnson decided it was time to invent Christmas lights and so first they put up a strand or a string of Christmas lights on their laboratory uh, during the 1880s Christmas season. So later in 1882 the idea evolved and Edward Johnson decides to wire, wire up uh, 80 light bulbs around the tree. They were blue, red and white I believe and so he winds them around a Christmas tree and not only was the tree lit it actually revolved like it spun around. But the world wasn't ready to embrace the Christmas lights yet. It would actually take a few decades for uh, the lights to become available to the masses. And it's all thanks to a young teenager living in 1917 who suggested to his parents who owned a, uh, who owned a lights, like a lighting shop, uh, that they should sell strands of colored, brightly colored Christmas lighting. And well, from then on, it's all history. By the way, speaking of uh, teenagers and Christmas lights, uh, I work at our church with a group of teenagers and, well, we decided to take them to the largest holiday light display in the Pacific Northwest. This place is called Lights of Christmas and it's basically like a 15-acre park filled with more than one million lights. This one specifically is located in Stanwood, Washington, and it's just an amazing place to spend time with the family. I'm enjoying it. Now, whether you like Christmas season or not, or whether you decorate your house with lights or put up a Christmas tree, one thing I hope you don't miss. And that is that 2000 years ago, there was a brighter light in the sky than usual. And it pointed some wise man to a newborn baby. Uh, not any ordinary baby. It was one that would grow up and live the most important life ever. And through his life, he would bring light into the world. In fact, he is the light of the world. So be wise and enjoy the holidays. <laughs>